Hey, good morning, everybody. Uneducated economist here. You ever wonder where the Fed comes up with their interest rate? Like, how do they come up with this two and a half, two and a quarter? How do they know where these interest rates should be? And I got this article out of the St. Louis Fed, and I think it's going to help with that. It says, the global decline of the natural rate of interest and implications for monetary policy. The natural rate of interest is the short-term rate that occurs when the economy has reached maximum employment and has stable inflation, i.e. the interest rate that occurs when the economy is in equilibrium. We define monetary policy to be accommodative, restrictive, or neutral if the policy rate is less than, greater than, or equal to the natural rate, respectively. Congress has mandated the Federal Reserve to stabilize inflation and attain maximum employment. Okay, so if you're not quite following there, what is basically being said there is that the Federal Reserve is mandated to keep a maximum employment and a stable inflation. Okay, so for I guess a good way to look at it is during the 08 recession, right? The 08, 09 recession, the employment, unemployment just skyrocketed, right? Nobody had any jobs. And so the Federal Reserve dropped interest rates down to damn near zero, right? And this spurred off credit growth, right? And it started getting people to borrow money and getting into the system to build houses and start businesses or whatever. But this started getting job growth growing, right? So when employment got maximized, right, that's when the Federal Reserve needs to return to normal, right? So their normal, you know, nobody knows where exactly normal is, but it's, you know, quite a bit of ways up there, you know, from the from zero where they had interest rates at. Now, what they're saying here is that the natural or neutral rate is when employment and inflation are stable and the interest rates are no longer restrictive nor accommodative to the economy. Well, here's the problem that's coming in, right? Is that the interest rates, when they started kicking those up, found neutral or natural very low, very far away from the normal that was much higher, okay? So typically what the Fed would do during recessions is drop interest rates to combat it. We're at 2.5%. There's nowhere to room. There's no room to move, right? And it kind of goes on to say that here. A declining natural rate of interest poses real challenges for the central bank because it limits the bank's ability to respond to recessions. When an economy enters recession, policymakers decrease policy interest rates but increase them back to normal when the economy starts growing. If natural rates are as low as the estimates presented here, central banks, including the Federal Reserve, won't be able to raise normal rates far above the zero lower bound in normal times without policy becoming restrictive. This is with lower natural rates of interest even in normal times. Central banks won't be able to respond effectively to recessions because there won't be in much scope to the lower interest rates. So that's what I'm saying there, is that during the last recession, they dropped interest rates down to zero. When they started kicking those interest rates up, they found that in order to stay neutral, to not be accommodative, no restricted to the economy, those interest rates were like really low, right? And now with the idea that the next recession might be coming in and dropping interest rates to combat the recession, there's no interest rates. There's, they were at two and a half percent. The scope of interest rates is so low that there's no room to move there. So it goes on to say here, instead of using conventional monetary policy tools to influence short-term interest rates, central banks might have to rely on unconventional monetary policies for unconventional times. For example, during the financial crisis of 0809, the federal funds rate already cut to zero. The Federal Reserve stimulated the economy with quantitative easing, which entitled purchases of pre-specified amounts of bonds and financial assets with forward guidance and reduced which reduce the expected future path of policy rates. So, yeah, basically they're saying there is that we dropped down to zero and it still wasn't enough even then. So they're like, okay, so now we need to do something else. And that was the quantitative easing where they actually started buying bonds and putting them onto their asset sheets. Right? And that was very unconventional. That's not something that they typically did. Now, they did hold bonds and stuff like that on their asset sheets prior to quantitative easing. Just not to that extent, okay? Not to where they took their, I mean, I think they had like, what, $680 billion in liabilities to four point something trillion in liabilities. So it was like a huge, like, huge move, not something that typically was seen. Anyway, it goes into conclusion here. The policy interest rates set by the central banks have been in decline or have been declining in many countries over the past 20 years as natural rates of interest in those countries has fallen. 
The declining natural rate of interest reduces the ability of the central banks to respond to recessions with conventional monetary policy. Understanding the future direction of that rate and the cause of the decline is important for designing effective monetary policy. So, in my opinion, when I read this, it is basically saying that we have found neutral, interest rates are low, there's a recession, well, they don't say it in here, but there's a recession coming, and we don't have any room to move. So what is going to be the unconventional tools that they will use? They don't state it in here, and I'm hoping you guys will let me know in the comments. All right, talk to you guys later.